What's growing on, gardeners? It's Sunday, January 7th, and it is a beautiful evening here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. One of my favorite things about winter gardening is what I don't have to deal with this time of year. Insect pests devouring and destroying my plants. But believe you me, before you know it, those pests will be waking up again and wreaking havoc on your garden. That's why on today's video, I'm going to share the one thing that can revolutionize your garden and eliminate over 95% of all insect pests. And it is just so easy. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon store and spread shop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. Here where I live on the southeastern coast of North Carolina, I'm not going to tell you that we have the worst insect pest pressure in the world because I'm sure that some places have it worse. However, we have it pretty bad. Stink bugs, shield bugs, leaf-footed bugs, grasshoppers, leaf hoppers, cabbage worms, tomato hornworms, Worms, Japanese beetles, cucumber beetles, harlequin bugs, squash bugs, vine borers, pickle worms, aphids, spider mites. <sighs> We have all of that and a lot of them and I'm sure a lot of other things that I can't even think of right now off the top of my head. So yeah, we have a lot to deal with here in the swampy coastal southeast. When I moved from the northeast to the southeast over six years ago, has it been that long already? I may as well have moved to another planet. I was used to dealing with insect pest pressure up in the northeast, but it was nothing like what I'm dealing with down here. There are way more bugs down here and also the length of time that you have to deal with the infection infestations is just so much longer. So it was like having to relearn how to deal with things all over again. And in the beginning of my southeastern gardening career, I relied on mostly pest sprays and insect dusts and things like that to manage the pest population. But it only worked so well. First of all, it was expensive to have to buy all of these different concentrates and dusts. And second of all, even though I tried to be as organic and natural as possible, I still didn't like spraying all this stuff on my food. And third, it's so time consuming to do all of this regularly, especially when you have a thunderstorm season where it washes off your plants almost daily. You just wind up burning out because you don't feel like doing it throughout the entire summer. It gets too hot, you get tired, and then the pests eventually win. They wear you down and they grind you out. So what I've tried to do over the past few years is develop a routine where I simply don't need to spray as much. And I've eliminated the majority of the spraying of my regimen through this one little thing and a couple of other handy dandy tricks along the way. So what's my big tip? Well, the number one tip that has revolutionized the way that I grow pest-free vegetables is simply by covering my vegetables so the insects can't get to them. I know it sounds really simple, but the fact is that nothing beats physical barriers for keeping insects off of your vegetation. No spraying routine in the world, no interplanting routine in the world, no amount of diversity in your garden is going to do better than simply putting a barrier around your vegetables so the insects can't get to them. So I've been working this winter to cover all of my raised beds as much as possible with these PVC hoop house structures. That way when the insects start re-emerging in late winter, early spring again, I will be able to simply throw covers over them so the insects can't get to my plants. And I've experimented this with individual hoop structures last year and had such great success for so many reasons that I'm just putting them everywhere throughout my garden. In fact, just two weeks ago, I showed you how to build my favorite easiest hoop house structure yet. A removable design that you can pull off and put back on whenever you want. And I will make sure to drop a link down in the video description that is a playlist of all of my simple hoop house builds. The beauty of the hoop house design is how versatile they are for year round gardening. You will go 365 days a year using this in some way. This is the removable hoop house that I showed you how to build just a couple of weeks ago. And on it is a medium duty agricultural fabric, which lets in rain and light, but keeps the frost off my cold hardy vegetables. And as a result, what you see under here is just beautiful. I have beautiful broccoli plants that are putting on wonderful heads that you can see here. And then on the other side, you can see the perfect mustard greens that are under here, the perfect Brussels sprouts, the perfect heads of cabbage, all growing wonderfully under the frost protection of this hoop house. Then this is a new hoop house structure that I just built. And you can see how beautiful the plants are that are growing under here. I have collard greens and I have cold hardy red leaf lettuce, all completely undamaged, just looking absolutely fantastic. 
Here is how the year-round process will work. Right now, because we're in the winter and we're getting hard frost and freezes multiple times every single week, the agricultural fabric or floating row covers, whatever you want to call it, is on the hoop house right now. Then once about March 1st rolls around and we stop getting regular hard freezes, we can take that fabric off and we will transition to something called insect netting or garden netting. This won't provide very much frost protection, but it's like a screen that will keep all of the small insects out. And then we will keep that on until roughly Memorial Day, give or take a couple of weeks, depending on the weather. When the sun gets really strong, we'll swap that out for this. 40% shade cloth, and that will keep the bad heat stress off of our vegetables. It'll prevent the cool crops from bolting, and it'll keep our tomatoes and peppers and cucumbers and other vegetables at a much lower level of stress, so they will flower more and produce more. Then once September rolls around and the sun starts weakening again, we will take off the shade cloth, we will put back on the insect netting, and we will run with the insect netting until the hard frosts and freezes start again in late November, early December, and then we will put the agricultural fabric back on. So really, these hoops should largely be covered every single day with something. And in an effort to keep things simple, I will make sure that I place a direct link down in the video description that will show you where to get all of these various covers. They are are all very affordable and will last many, many years. So these are one-time investments that you just bring out when the seasons are appropriate. So that begs the question, why doesn't everybody build little structures like these over their garden beds? And I think I know why. The first reason is people think they're difficult and expensive to build, but I just grabbed a few items at Lowe's on Saturday and I built this today in half an hour. That's all it took me to build this hoop house structure. They're really easy to do. And again, I have a tutorial link down in the video description. The second reason I think people don't build structures like these is they think they need bees to pollinate their different vegetables. Well, very few of the things that we grow in our garden actually need pollinators. Uh, things that we grow for leafy greens like your lettuce or your spinach or your kale or your broccoli or your cauliflower, etc. We're eating the leaves. We don't need any kind of pollination for them, so they're fine. Things like root vegetables like your carrots or beets or radishes. We're eating the roots, so we obviously don't need pollination for them. The only things that really need pollinators are things with separate male and female flowers. So for example, your tomatoes, peppers, and eggplant, the male and female sex organs are enclosed in one flower. So they're wind pollinated. The wind vibrate the flowers around, it splashes the pollen around, and everything's fine no need for pollinators if you're growing them outdoors. The only vegetables that I need pollination for are cucurbits that I grow in my garden. So things like squash, cucumbers, and melons, be it cantaloupe, watermelon, honeydew, etc. cetera. Uh, the cucumbers that I grow today are largely parthenocarpic, meaning they don't require pollination at all. So that has taken the cucumber varieties I've selected out of the equation. So the only thing I really don't cover these days are my zucchini, my watermelon, and my other melons. Everything else you can pretty much leave covered and you don't have to worry about bees. And if you're worried about providing pollen to the bees themselves and that's why you're afraid to enclose off any of your vegetables, don't worry. Plant fruit trees and flowers around your yard instead. Most vegetable flowers have kind of low quality pollen anyway. When my fruit trees are in bloom, most bees can't even be bothered with the flowers in my garden. But you can also plant choice flowers around your garden as well. Things like sunflowers or zinnias or pyrethrin daisies or other kind of daisies, etc. Uh, not only can they attract other pests away from your garden, but bees generally like those complex carbohydrate flowers a lot better anyway. And last but not least, what about gardeners that garden directly in the earth and they don't use raised beds that they can easily strap conduits or pipes to the side? Well, the solution that I would recommend is you can go to a hardware store and you can buy these pieces of 3 8 inch rebar and then you can pound them into the ground a few feet so they're nice and sturdy. Then you can take the half inch electrical conduit or PVC pipe and you can simply take it and just thread it right on top of the rebar. So that's what I do. Alternatively, there are lots of online kits that you can buy for pre-bent hoops that are made for earth bed gardening so you can have long rows with a big long row cover on top of it but overall this is a really good economical option on how you can do things and this is how I built my shade tunnel enclosure behind me that I cover with the shade cloth in the dead of summer.
So simply by covering my garden vegetables, I have been able to eliminate 95% of the insect pests in my garden. I can't recommend this method highly enough. Every time I build one of these structures and I see the great results, I wish I just would have done this sooner instead of spraying my garden unnecessarily and spending all that time and money when I didn't really have to. Yes, it is true that this will not block 100% of insect pests. You will have to check on occasion to make sure that some didn't get it up and in through the cover but generally speaking this is going to stop 95 percent of them and it's going to dramatically reduce the amount of spraying that you're going to have to do oh and by the way if you're curious why this hoop structure is open it's because i don't have insect pests right now it's too cold and the brassicas inside are very prone to bolting in the hot weather so because i'm just trying to keep the hard frosts off of them i am going to keep this as an open structure but as soon as the insect pest pressure starts and i swear to the insect netting, the netting will go all the way to the ground. That way the insects can't get in. So hopefully I've convinced you to build a few structures like these throughout your garden. Even if you only build one and you just experiment with it, I think you will be blown away by the results. And again, the benefits don't just stop at insects. You will also be able to switch out the shade cloth in the summer. You will be able to switch out to the agricultural fabric in the winter. This will greatly increase your productivity and increase the length of your growing season. You'll also keep birds out. You'll keep squirrels out. It is so worth your time. And like I said, I will link down to my playlist below in the video description that shows you how I build all of these very simple, inexpensive hoop structures. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please, Ring that notification bell so you're notified when I release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I featured in this video, they are all direct linked below down in the video description. And you can also click on my Amazon storefront link to see everything I use in real life in my garden while you're down there. And also while you're down there, check out my Spreadshop link for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Oh, Noser, Dale is chewing up my Kong Christmas present I got him. Dale's killing it. He's a killer. He's murdering that animal. Oh, have you ever seen anybody in rubber ducky pajamas be such a killer? Look at him go with surgical precision. Oh, no. Oh, we're going to have to bury that in the backyard when we're done, Dale. What have you done? There is stuffing everywhere. Oh, and I'm just egging him on more and more. Get it. Get it! Oh, rest in peace, leader of the Kong family.